Hey guys, what's up? Kito again here. And in this 3D Printed Profits episode, I have Justin and Christy, and they have built their Etsy store to become the massive success that it is now. Um, in this episode, we're going to talk about how they came about, um, their background, how they got started, and how they built their business. Um, as always, the links for this video, everything we talk about, is going to be in the description below. If you're on YouTube, and if you're on your favorite podcast player, it's going to be in the description in the show notes below. Um, make sure you guys stay till the very, very end where I'm going to give you your own products so you don't have to um, think about anything. I'm going to give you your own product idea so you can start your own 3D printing side business and get started today. All right. So, um, you guys, uh, I met you via uh, Etsy. I was just looking through 3D printed shops and I landed in yours and you guys, I, I love your shop. So let's talk about how you guys started. What's, what's your awesome background? Sure. Um, we both have backgrounds in engineering and we live mm -hmm. in Raleigh, North Carolina. And uh, we didn't get started with 3D printing until the pandemic hit in 2020. And uh, we found ourselves working from home quite a bit more and uh, quite a bit of time on our hands. 3D printing is always something I wanted to try. Um, I got exposed to it in MBA school at NC State uh, back in 2017. We actually had a new product development class that utilized 3D printing. So Got a uh, Prusa printer in uh, about the summer of 2020. Uh, being home was real nice because you can prototype and then you can go get the print off and see what happened and then tweak it and then print it again. So it was real nice just uh, being at home and being able to just see what was happening there. And then uh, we saw news articles where people were printing face shields with the 3D printers and we thought that was really cool. So we wanted to sort of help healthcare workers as well. We were a little late on the curve for that. We really didn't start our business until about December uh, of 2020. But one of the first things we made was like these inserts that go into a paper face mask to help keep them poofed out and keep them comfortable. So that was actually the first product we ever sold was uh, a face mask insert. That's cool, man. And uh, Miss Christy, what about you? Um, with starting it, um, for the most part, I'm here at home with the kids. So, I mean, I'm out you know, changing the prints and that kind of thing. I really hadn't thought about 3D printing before, but, you know, it just started as, you know, a little new toy that we have and let's see what we can do. And then eventually it became, well, let's see if we can make any money off it. And then it became, okay, well, maybe we need to get another printer. And then hmm. before you know it, I'm asking for another printer. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's just pretty good fast. about uh, taking over the living room with 3D printers. We have three now. <laughs> yeah, it, it, um, it's a common um, it's a common theme that that who everyone I've spoke with like it, it happens fast. Like yeah. like next thing you know, you're needing machines to keep up with the demand because right. it's so successful and because you can make virtually anything. Yeah, virtually anything. It's, it's really thing. good for creative types because you can prototype and you can make things and sell it. You, um, it's really interesting too because when you have your own business, you can tweak the prices, you can tweak the um, variations that you sell, and just see what see mm -hmm. what uh, sells and what doesn't. It's a real right. cool way to experiment. And even yeah, changing the absolutely. keywords to make it more searchable mm -hmm. makes a big impact as well. Cool. So we'll get into that here in a little bit. Um, so. You guys, how much are you guys making a month in, in your business? You guys are making in, in a good thousands, right? Yeah, we make more than a thousand each month. Um, some months are slow, like right now is a slow period. And then fourth quarter is usually about half of our sales. So okay. if someone were to start a new business right now and sales were slow, I would say don't be discouraged. Wait until fourth quarter when sales are pretty hot. Mm -hmm. All right. But, uh, yeah, we, we make about five figures a year, but we did last year and we will this year. That's awesome. As a side hustle, that's pretty significant. Um, it is. Sure. because it adds to, you know, your, your revenue, your bottom line, you can start investing heck, you know, that can, that can just tip you enough to go, you know, buy a house. It, right? it could so, do that. Also, I'm actually not going into work as much because I need to keep up with the prints and that kind of thing. So there you go. That I'm at home more with the kids as well. Yeah, God willing this, you know, this year, you know, you guys hit that, that six figure year. 
bang, yeah. right? <laughs> it, it'll come, it'll come one day. But yeah, we spend maybe an hour or two at night each evening, just um, trimming up prints, boxing them up, packaging them, printing labels, and then a little bit of time on the weekend as needed. When sales yeah, so out. let's talk about product a little, a little bit here. What, what is it exactly that you guys sell? We sell uh, a couple of different things. So, you know, we start with the face mask insert and then we moved to uh, an object that we found off of Thingiverse. Um, it was a baby Yoda toothpaste topper. And, those um, things, those things are actually, right here, We make these guys. These have been really popular. Um, you know, of course it, it comes with a lot of support material you have to trim away inside, under the ears, in the mouth. And um, we actually make these um, caps that press fit into the Yoda head as well. So it fits on different sizes of toothpaste. And um, some of the innovations that we did on this, you know, we got it from Thingiverse, but we altered the mouth to be bigger because uh, some people complained that it wasn't putting enough toothpaste out. And then we also made the caps press fit. So we changed the size of everything so that it fits just right. And uh, of course we paint it too, so that it looks real nice. That's awesome. And, uh, this was a really big seller. A lot of people picked up on that. It was posted on Instagram, Facebook, um well there was a reviewer on youtube she covers all kinds of baby yoda stuff and mm -hmm. so she was actually a customer you know we didn't seek her out but she, you know she purchased it and then she loved it and then she featured it on her video and then, and then boom sales blew up yes right yeah you'll never know you, you just that, that's what 3d printing does you, you make the coolest off-the-cuff stuff that you'll never find Right. And someone yeah. will pick it up and the virality of the products you can make of 3D printing is unbelievable. Sure. Unbelievable. It is. And we were one of the first people to make it. Uh, Justin came up with a good idea to streamline the process on using it, which made it a lot more feasible for us to sell it. And uh -huh. so that was a huge Do you already have any so business background? I have um, an MBA. Yes. Okay. There you go. I took some marketing classes. Yeah. And we created other variations. So, you know, once the green one was selling, if people thought it was too expensive, then we sell a version where it's a do it yourself kit where you do the trimming and the painting. Gotcha. And we sell another gotcha. version that is a, a glow in the dark version. So you cut off the lights and it glows green, which is pretty cool. So, so how do you guys figure out which, you know, which new products to sell and add to your shop? It's hmm. a, it's a little bit of market in technology push. So sometimes we will go to uh, Google Trends or eRank.com and you can look and see what people are searching for. And then you could try to find a product that matches that. Um, another thing we do is um, technology push where maybe we have solved a problem. Like I'll give an example. This is a, um, this is a 3D printed uh, cat bowl holder that we make. This one is an eight inch and um, it actually has the cat's name on there, Binks. And so this is actually a, uh, an order that we're gonna mail out tomorrow. Um, so we had a problem with our cats. They were eating too fast and um, they were eating just off of a bowl off the ground and it was causing them to you know, throw up quite a bit. So we uh, did some research and elevated stands are good for that as our tilted stands, but we couldn't find any that were sold. And um, so we came up with this kind of modern looking design, uh, drew it up in Tinkercad. It's based off of uh, a series of circles. And um, we just sized it to common cat bowl sizes and it's been one of our best sellers this year. Awesome, and, and you designed that yourself? We did, so it's a product that we made for our own pets. We tried it out, had great success. It ended the scarfing and barfing and uh, we have a lot of customers that say it's worked for their cats as well. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So how much time do you guys spend developing new products versus improving your existing offerings? Yeah, That's a great question. So I think we spend a little more time improving existing offerings because I think that once you find something that is selling, uh, finding ways to make it better, improve your search engine optimization, tweak the design, uh, listen to your customers, see what colors they want, see mm -hmm. what kind of personalization they want. That's like mining in a vein of solid gold, whereas new product development is kind of hit and miss. Gotcha. But it's very creative and fun. So I like to do some of that as well. That's awesome. Um, so 
let's go back to the, the, the beginning. How did you guys get your first clients? Um, are you primarily on Etsy? We are primarily on we Etsy. Are. We might open up an Amazon store eventually, but uh, yeah, everything's on Etsy right now. And um, you know, we posted the face mask inserts, which sold a little bit. We, um, so that was a success. Another one we posted were these gift tags uh, where it was 3D printed in green and red. And uh, you would attach those to presents. Didn't sell a single one of those. So that one was a dud. We've, uh, we've probably had more duds than successes. It's like 80-20 rule. 20% of what we sell makes 80% of our money. Yeah. And, and, and at the, it's, uh, it's not just you guys. It's the same for me. <laughs> yes. it's, it's for yes. everyone. If all, if all our products made money, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> but you, right. if you look at our store, you know, our tagline is we're 3D printing joys and smiles. And uh, basically that's, that's our goal is to make folks happy so they leave nice reviews and then that builds customer loyalty and trust and then people will come and buy from us in droves. That's awesome. So, so what happened next, right? So you guys got your first sales, right. um, you know, you, you put up your, your Etsy shop, but what happened next? Did, did things blow up? Did that um, YouTuber immediately pick you guys up? That was pretty soon after. That was next spring, yeah. early spring. Yeah, it's probably by. So sales were slow in December and then picked up in January and then exploded in February because we basically went viral um, when somebody picked up the, the Baby Yoda toothpaste topper. So we sold a lot of those. We <laughs> bought our second printer and uh, incorporated our business. And so we were able to buy the second and third printer as part of the business. So that helped offset income last year as far as taxes go. Um, just we were carving and painting Yoda's like crazy for a couple of months there. Yeah. It was fun, but it was hectic. I mean, it was like you, we had some days where we had more than 100 orders. Yeah. And not only that, we had to, we couldn't keep up. So we like farmed out some of the business and had someone else with a Prusa help us print. And yeah. then we, you know, meet them and pick them up each day. Did you guys say 100 orders a day? Yes. Yeah, for a couple of days. Congratulations, you guys. That's awesome. Yes. It was really fun. It really was. Yeah, those was are a lot of good days. Pardon? Those are yeah, four those figure were, days. Those were high, high revenue days, of yeah. course. Yeah, that's awesome. Love those days. Those are great. Yep. And then once people yeah. were visiting the shop for that product, then they would come and stay and they could see some of our other, other products. So... It kind of helped us overall. Uh, yeah, so your average order value goes up. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, and initially, like the price, we set it pretty low, like to get maybe the first, I don't know, 10 or 20 sales just to try to get some kind of numbers on Etsy. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, we went to like a more reasonable price after that. Um, just once we saw like, wow, these things really are selling, people actually want them, then, you know, we figured out what you know, what we need to charge per printing hour, that kind of thing. Yeah, it was amazing to see people that would buy them from, you know, countries in Europe and pay that international shipping for it as well. So the demand was there and the price was right. That's incredible. So, so what filament do you guys use? We use a mix of uh, filaments. Um, right now, I think our favorite is a, a brand called American Filament. It's made in Alabama. And um, it prints really well. Their white is like a really bright, true white, and their black is great as well. Mm -hmm. And can so, you purchase this on Amazon? Yes, you can. Yes. Yeah, American, American film, film is yeah. probably our favorite. Yeah, it's PLA. It's very crisp. We haven't had to clean up the prints much. Saves us a ton of time. It doesn't get stringy. It's really good stuff. Um, awesome. And it's only like two or three bucks more than other PLAs. So it's okay. a good deal. Yeah, it saves us a lot of time. And, you know, it's humid here in North Carolina. So, you know, our filament does tend to, right. to get stringy up if we, you know, don't use it for a long time. I think we also use Overture mm -hmm. and Sonalu and a couple of others. We, we're not really brand loyal. <laughs> we go by color. Yeah, we do it mostly based on color. Okay. Um, and, and what machines do you guys use? It's the Prusa i3. Yep, that's, uh, we bought three of the same printer, so we've gotten good at building them. So we built all three from scratch, um, and, you know, we've changed out hot ends, we've changed out nozzles, we're changed out motors and fans, we're pretty good at troubleshooting them. So 
we just standardized on the Prusa i3 and uh, we've been happy with it. Mm -hmm. okay. In fact, that's what we recommend for now, right? What was that? You guys are up to three machines now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have three machines. That's right. And that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we'd recommend people, you know, assemble the machines themselves so that they know when something goes wrong, how it all goes together and that kind of thing. And it looks, it looks very intimidating, but honestly, once you get into it, like, it's really not that bad. Yeah, the uh, the last Prusa I built, I built without even eating a single gummy bear. So, uh, <laughs> <better. laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. So what struggles did you guys people have? People who built one know what I'm talking about. So what struggles did you guys have uh, when you first started with this whole thing? Struggles, um, you know, getting the first layer to adhere at first. I mean, you know, once you get that figured out, that kind of thing, you know, we started out with the printers out in the, um, the shed out in the wood shop. It was too humid. So then we had to bring them in the house. Mm -hmm. um, and, there's and also business wise, what, what struggle did you guys have business wise? Sure. We've had um, some supply chain issues, like we'll, mm -hmm. we'll uh, get enough filament to run orders for two or three weeks and then go to reorder the filament. And now all of a sudden it's like a three or four week wait. Mm -hmm. They have to find somebody else that makes it or like boxes. The cost of boxes keeps going up and up and up. It's crazy. Yes. Well, and also with the cat bowls that go in the elevated cat bowl stands, we weren't able to get them from our existing supplier. You know, I guess they were stuck on a container somewhere. So we had to redesign it to accommodate a different size bowl. And we go with that one now. Oh, it gets better. It's funnier than that. So Nico, we, we were getting the bowls from Amazon, like local Amazons around Raleigh. And we would go to, a, I mean, not an Amazon, a Walmart. And we would buy every single bowl they had, like the stainless steel bowls. Uh -huh. And we would sell those. And we would have to go to another Walmart. And so we we bought all the bowls from every Walmart in this area, and they could not keep up with us. So we literally sold more cat bowls than Walmart. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So why don't you guys just go straight to the manufacturer to get them for cents? <laughs> that would be the next step. That yeah. would be the, there you go. The next step. Start sourcing that. Start sourcing that. That's mm -hmm. right. Um, so how else does a business make money now? Do you guys, so you guys have your Etsy shop. How else does a business make money? We tried doing a local event. Was it called Dog Days? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, we sold a little bit. I maybe broke even. That was about it. So, so tell me more about that. What is that? That was an oh. in-person event. It was um, at one of the local parks, and people bring their dogs, and there's a lot of vendors that mm -hmm. set up and food trucks and stuff like that. And it's all themed around dogs and cats. So we sold some of our cat stands, and we also have a um, – it's a dog bowl stand that attaches to your dog's crate mm -hmm. and so you can move it up and down anywhere on the rails and um use your own bowls which is yeah. pretty neat so i thought it was nice to showcase we also make a really fun cat fidget spinner and the cats like you know they bat at it yeah. and it knocks out little treats so it you know it's a boardroom buster for them so people i think enjoyed getting to shop again and put their hands on things uh, but you know the weather didn't hold out so you know, an online shop doesn't have to deal with all that. So, I mean, it, I think we decided from that, you know, let's stick with online for the most part. If someone wants to do a local pickup, you know, we could meet them or they can swing by and pick something up. But in terms of sales, we'll stick with online. Yeah. And in terms of uh, dogs and cats, we've noticed that people will spend money on their dogs and cats and pets, and they'll spend money on their kids and grandkids. So somebody's going to start a business Look for something that could be gifted to pet owners. There you go. That's Justin's number one tip, number one. He's going to give you another number one tip later for when you guys start your 30 grand business. But um, yes, a lot of money on uh, dogs and grandchildren. Yes. Yes. And also <laughs> kids with birthday gifts, like 10 to $15 is a great price point. You know, kids are always going to parties. Well, now that. Mm -hmm. um, so. What profit margin are you guys uh, targeting when you do this? Somewhere between one third and one half of the price should be profit. Um, that way, you're you're not you're you're not like washing away sales, but you are getting fairly compensated for your time. Because you know some of these things they have to be assembled by hand, they have to be painted, they have to be trimmed. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really important. Um, I recommend keeping a spreadsheet where mm -hmm. you track the cost of goods sold. And it's everything from the box, the bubble wrap, the screws, the glue, the 
rubber bumpers, everything. Everything has a cost. And so yeah, yes. every put put everything on a line item in your spreadsheet and how much figure time out, it takes to process each item. Yeah, I mean, because really you should be paying yourself, right? So mm -hmm. you have to pretend like, well, what if this business was big and I had employees? What would I have to pay them? Put that in your cost of goods sold as well. And then do your markup at the very end. And that's that's really about the low end where your price should be. Gotcha. Um, so what options have you tried to increase uh, increase sales like Etsy, Etsy ads, um, maybe free shipping, right? But what, what have you guys tried? We, we've experimented with both of those. Yeah. So we've tried free shipping. We've tried without free shipping. We currently do not offer free shipping. The, the problem with, with free shipping is, of course, you're inflating the cost to cover the shipping, okay? But the shipping rates are not the same across the United States. So it's cheaper to ship to somebody that's near us than someone in California. And if you offer the same price to everybody, then you're kind of de facto charging local people more than they should be paying. And you're charging people that are further away from you less than what they should be paying. So you're subsidizing like sales in Washington and California. And then also international sales. So if you have that that fixed price for free shipping domestically, well now international sales are having to pay that plus their international shipping. So they're paying a lot more mm -hmm. than they should, which is gonna decrease your sales. So we currently just, we have a price for everybody and then you pay your shipping according to where you live. Gotcha, I, I know I've lost money in shipping costs before. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it has to be priced in accordingly. Um, you know, Mistakes were made, money was lost, but you learn quick your money's lost and tell you what you do, yes. you do learn quickly i think also some of it has to do with you know competition what they're doing because people are looking at you know the relative cost of things and you're not trying to have the lowest cost necessarily but you know if your item is quite a bit more it does stick out right um so justin you told you, you mentioned earlier that uh, you have an mba now what books do you recommend for anyone starting a 3d printing business I'm sorry, what was the question? What, what do I do you recommend? Well, what books? Yeah, what books do you yeah. recommend? And yeah, we've got two of them here. So um, the first one is Choose by Ryan Levesque. Can you see that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is a good book to start with um, because it kind of, you know, it's the single most important decision before starting your business is basically what are you going to sell? And you want to sell stuff that people are searching for. So he recommends using um, Google Analytics, Google search terms to figure out what people are searching for. Um, I recommend a site called eRank, and uh, we've been paying members of that for several months. If you'll go into there, it'll tell you, um, you know, the top 100 search terms on Etsy, Amazon, Walmart, uh, eBay, whatever platform you're going to be on. So you can make it platform specific. And then if you want to dive into something, um, you can see what's selling. So like an example would be right now, one of the number one search terms is summer jewelry. So no, no surprise there. So you can dig into that, you know, are people looking for necklaces or earrings or what are they looking for? So are they looking for stuff with butterflies on it or flowers, that kind of thing. So you can dive in there and, and see what people are looking for. If you'll sell something that people are searching for, you'll have much better success. All right. So what's the other book? The other book is uh, one that I picked up from the local used bookstore. It's called Why She Buys, and it's by Bridget Brennan. And um, I did not know this, but the majority, well, I mean, I think everybody knows that Etsy sort of leans female in terms of the shopping clientele. Right. But overall, on every platform, it leans female. Um, women make most of the decisions when it comes to buying. doesn't matter if it's cars, houses, shoes, clothing, or what. Um, women are involved. So you need to understand what they look for, what they value, and then you need to be able to serve that customer clientele better with your products. Awesome, man. So, so what's next for you guys? What, what's, what's the future of, um, of selling smiles? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. I, I guess we're working I won't on tell Amazon you, you, you're, you're doing the same thing. Yeah, we're, we've been working on a couple of things. So you know, I, I like to, when I develop things, I like to solve problems. So that's, that's my engineering background. So um, I'll show you one thing that we did here, or two things that solve problems. So this one right here 
you can tell this is 3D printed because this would be hard to manufacture any other way. But this is a uh, this is a stand that you mount on your wall. So we include the hardware with this, and then you put your router and your modem on top. And then in the back, there's a hole to train your cables, so you can train your cables down the wall. And uh, this lets you put your router and motor up high on the wall where you can get a better signal. So you can broadcast around your house a lot better. So this I'll is look at you guys. That, and you guys, and that's in your shop. Make. Yeah, this is something we make and we sell. Um, and this is a problem that we solve because we weren't getting a good signal upstairs in our house. So awesome. was, oh, oh, and how many products do you guys have in your, in your store now? How many products? It's between 30 and 40, I think. So we're all the time developing stuff. Sometimes we'll come up with stuff on our own. Sometimes we'll go to Thingiverse and find something that's really popular or something that we think has potential. And then we'll look at ways that we could improve it or make it more appealing to the general public. And then you guys design these yourself? Yeah. And, and using so the software? We use Tinkercad for the most part. And then sometimes- All we'll the Tinkercad, that's that. impressive. Oh yeah? Yeah, well, I mean, Tinkercad's easy. That's like uh, elementary. So I can I can get yeah. behind Tinkercad. <laughs> and Tinkercad then, uh, drives me nuts. And I'm like, dude, I, there's so many things I want to do right now, and it's so limiting. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it I mean, drives me crazy. You have to think in terms of shapes and adding and subtracting shapes. So everything is cubes and cylinders and that kind of thing, and then you're you're uh, chopping out holes and that kind of thing. So Anyway, there's, here's another one that we did. So um, take a lot of vitamins, fish oil, supplements, that kind of thing. So the pill box I had was just not doing it. It wouldn't hold it every day. So I made a big one. with your own pill box, look at that. Yeah, and then it's got its own compartments in here. And it's just a, it's just a slidey top to it. So, I mean, we've sold a couple of these now. I think these will be popular. Mm -hmm. So that's where you guys are headed, huh? Just, just more products, just build it well, up. Well, I've noticed that we have like different categories for our items. Um, so our things are, they're either toys, something pet related, something for the house or organization, personal care stuff like the toothpaste toppers uh, or tools. Um, and then we have like an other category uh, for that. I guess one of our favorite things was we had this like COVID trophy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I wish I had one I could show you. Go to our shop and check out our COVID trophy. We've actually sold a lot of those, so. For those who um, beat it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I mean. It's, you give one to your favorite epidemiologist. Yeah, they, we've sold a lot to doctors and surgeons and, and medical directors, but also people give them as jokes. So like there was one, it was it was like the, you know, the COVID molecule on top of the trophy. And then it said like the Euron Mute Award. And they gave it to somebody hey, that was working from home and could never take themselves off mute. <laughs> and you guys made this yourself? Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. Well, you know what, you guys, that's it for, for this episode. Thank you so much for being here. I, you guys gave so much good information. Um, I, I really hope that if you guys are watching, if you guys are listening to this, please pay good attention to what these guys were saying because they gave you guys a lot of uh, a lot of good stuff there. So let's wrap this up with you guys' number one tip for anyone who wants to start their own 3D printing business. Hmm. I would say when you start, start with one machine and, and get good at that one machine and then be patient and be persistent. Just to start slow, keep be patient and be persistent. What you offer, yes, you'll start getting people to view it. Then you'll start getting people to favorite your item. Then eventually you'll start getting sales. Reach out to your customers, see what they want. You know, if they want things in different colors or different sizes, Try that or, or with their name on it. So try all sorts of different things until you find what works. Yeah. Gotcha. So thank you guys. Appreciate it. Um, again, I told you if you would stay till the very, very end, I'll give you your own food or pretty business. I'll give you your own uh, product idea. And so tonight's product idea is wedding stuff. Now, the wedding industry is a billion dollar industry, you guys. Huge, tons of money. So dogs, grandkids and weddings, okay? Now, what, what, what do I mean when I say weddings? So when you say weddings, you can do wedding favors, you can do wedding centerpieces, you can do um, groomsmen gifts, you can do bridesmaid gifts. There's so many things you guys can do. You can have custom cufflinks, you can have custom women's earrings just specifically for that wedding. And there's so much money 
spent in these because you're supposed to only get married once. <laughs> Doesn't always happen. But there's so much money to be made in weddings, you guys. And because it's so custom, you guys can charge a premium amount on those. And when they order, they order a lot, right? So a hundred person wedding will need 10 centerpieces. Are you gonna make those 10 centerpieces? They're at least 50 to 75 bucks for one. That's already a $750 order, just on centerpieces alone. So mm -hmm. there you go. That's a big one. Again, you guys, thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it. Good luck to you guys. Um, we'll do this again for a Where Are They Now episode later down in the future. Cool. Thanks Great. for having us, Nico. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it.